This is gonna change some lives right here. So I'd like to turn it over to uh, uh, Jason Jaro, and he will, uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure to moderate this. Um, and I've uh, really, this has changed my life on a daily basis. So let's, have, let's welcome Jason Jaro. How are you, good to see you. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome, you're welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. That's great. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to call the World Council nominees up. They're going to give their three-minute speeches. It'll be three minutes to the dot, as Paul Malloy usually uh, cut off. That's it. He does that one. So uh, first, we're going to call up, we're going to start with the residents. So I see a lot of empty seats out here. Make sure you text your friends, even the ones you don't like, and tell them to come on back in so they can hear these people talk, give their speeches, and then you all can start voting on those for tomorrow. So for the residents, we're going to have Alton, and if I, if I mess up your name, please forgive me. Alton Eppel from Arizona. Marion Gray from DC. Where's Marion? I saw her. Martin Juarez from North Carolina. William Schumacher from Virginia. Marcus Pitts from Kansas. <laughs> I probably could have just said the person from Kansas. <laughs> Jeremy Thompson from Nebraska. Christy Green from Oklahoma. And Lynn McGee from North Carolina. There's more people from North Carolina than that. <laughs> Where's Lynn? Okay, she's coming up. All right, so we will start with Alton Eppel from Arizona. Okay, a lot of people. <laughs> so actually I go by chance um, and I'm a person in recovery, long-term recovery and what that means for me is that I haven't found it necessary to take a drink or a drug since November 29, 2018. Man, there's a lot of people, man. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, okay, so. AZ. AZ. All right. All right. So, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm from Chapter One in AZ, the first chapter in Arizona. Um, you know, I, I came into Oxford brand new. I uh, had a bad taste in my mouth from halfway houses that I've been through previously. Um, for those who heard me speak earlier, uh, halfway houses that I've been in all, only cared about the money. I moved into Oxford and it, they, actually gave, they actually gave a damn about you. Um, that really stuck out to me the most. Uh, right off the jump, I was dragged, dragged along to be a service. Um, it, it awoken the spark in me that I didn't know I had. Um, being a service to other houses, which, which turned into being a service to other, well, to houses, to, uh, to the people, to the houses, and then being a service as a chapter officer. Um, and I just was newly elected to a state officer position for chapter services, so, you know, one of the things I get a kick out of the most out of all of this is the learning experience. I have a passion of being of service now. Um, you know, and I heard about this World Council thing and I just was like, here, sign me up. I want, I, want, I want it. I really want it. So I don't really know what else to say other than I, I'm, I'm willing. I have a passion, like I said, for being a service. And I just, I really would like to be, a, I have the opportunity to be a part of something bigger. And I'm good.
That's Aaron Apple from Arizona. Now, uh, a lady I know personally we're going to call up is Marion Gray from D.C. Good God of mine. Y'all look good. Well, first of all, my name is Marion Gray from D.C. My sobriety date is December the 19th, 2009. I believe in doing service work. <laughs> If there is an issue, we will get it done. Um, we actually need a voice, and I will be your voice. I'm a very good listener, and I'm a very hard worker. That's about all I have to say. The vote is on you. Vote for Marion Gray. I'm all your woman. That's Marion Gray from D.C. Next, we have Martin Juarez from North Carolina. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Martin Juarez from Raleigh, North Carolina, originally Tampa. Um, I'm an introvert. My sponsor tells me to do things that make me uncomfortable. Uh, he also tells me that service work will keep me sober, and I believe that. Um, Oxford House has saved me. It saved me in the past. When the pandemic hit, I left the house and I went back out. Um, I know I need to stay involved. And when I heard about the position available, I just put myself out there. Um, I don't see it as a competition. Uh, there's plenty of spots open for this. And so I, everybody here deserves to be there just because they want to, I think. It's amazing that so many people are out here supporting everybody. It's a beautiful thing. Um, Thank you. I've never felt part of something before until I came into the Oxford House. I have unity tattooed on the back of my neck since I was 17, but I never knew what that meant until I got into the Oxford House and actually felt that. And I just want to say thank you guys. Thank you. Yes, Oxford House will certainly teach you about unity. Next, we're going to have William Schumacher from Virginia. All right, this is a lot of people. Um, my name is William Schumacher. I am, I am a member in long-term recovery, and what that means to me is I have not had the need to feel to use a drink or a drug since September 30th, 2018. Um, so I moved into Oxford House November 22nd, 2018, um, after treatment, of course. Um, never heard of an Oxford House. Never heard of, of uh, sober living. And this is something that was amazing to me. I mean, when I moved into a house and got uh, pulled in, I mean, these guys pulled me in real quick. Um, I wanted to know how it worked. I wanted to know what we did, you know, how we worked together. So I read, I, I sat in front of the computer, I read, uh, I pulled up literature. I mean, I did this for, for a couple months. And then I was asked to help, so I did. Um, I moved into um, a couple houses that needed help um, a couple months after another. You know, this is ongoing for the first, I guess, six or eight months. I just kept moving around from different house to different house and helping out. Um, <clears throat> in 2020, uh, I was asked to open up my first house in Virginia, which was probably one of the best feelings I ever had um, in, in Oxford House. So. Uh, during this year, um, you know, starting to open this house, I took on, of course, this is the Virginia State Secretary position. I took on the Chapter 2 Treasurer position, um, and I did all this in, this, in, in 2020. Um, 
I stayed at Oxford House Oceanfront, which was the first house I opened for a couple months, um, about four months, I think. And then they asked me to open up a second house. So I moved again um, into another house, the 150th house in Virginia is um, Oxford House Triton at that time. So that was, that was, uh, that was another great experience. Um, I loved feeling that way. I loved the guys coming into the house, watching them change. I mean, it was, it was uh, something, uh, you know, I've never felt before. So um, recently, back uh, February 12th, I moved out of Oxford House Triton and I moved into the last house I opened, which was Oxford House Nauticus, also located in Virginia Beach, um, which is a nine men bed's house, um, nine men house. Um, these guys are my family. Um, and they're going to kick me off. So, you know, um, I love all you guys. You know, I don't do this for, for me. I do it for, for all of you. So um, thank you. I don't know. We'll have to check the records, but I think that was uh, a record itself at four minutes and 25 seconds. <laughs> You, you. <laughs> All right, next we're going to have Marcus Pitts from Kansas. <laughs> hey, everybody, my name is Marcus Pitts. That's Marcus Pitts on your ballot. And I'm a person in long-term recovery, and what that means for me is that I have not found it necessary to drink or use drugs since January 18th of 2000, 2018. And that is only through the grace of God, the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, and Oxford House. And the reason I say those two things, the last two things there is because I would do anything to protect the model that saved my life. <clears throat> I have resources in Kansas, Seth Dewey and Steph Curry, that have explained to me what it means to be on the Oxford House World, Con World Council. And I can assure you this, my ego, my ego does not need to be on the World Council, but my soul needs to be of service. The, the progression of my service and my recovery has led me directly to here and by the grace of God, I'm allowed to tell you guys why I want to be your voice on the World Council. That's all I got. Thank you, Marcus. Next, we have Jeremy Thompson from Nebraska. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy Thompson. I'm from Omaha, Nebraska. I'm a person in long-term recovery, and what that means to me is I haven't had the need to use drugs or alcohol since March 7th, 2016. I moved into my first Oxford house November 4th, 2016. Uh, coming up on five years since I've lived in Oxford house. Uh, I was in my first Oxford House for about two years, then I moved in my uh, most recent Oxford House, been there for about three years now. Uh, I just want to say God works in mysterious ways, because three days ago I had a conversation with my sponsor, and he does a lot of uh, group speaking, and I told him that I would never find myself in front of 1,500 people <laughs> on stage speaching. So it's just crazy how that works out. Um, so I'm going to call him after this and let him know. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's just, uh, it's crazy how things also work out because there's been so many obstacles that have stood in, in the way of me. I'm not even supposed to be here right now. Like we can only send so many people. We motioned for newcomers to go. I've been to Oxford World Convention before, you know, I wanted other people to get this experience. Lo and behold, here I am till I almost missed the plane because I forgot my suit at the house. So, uh. Yeah, made it by the skin of my teeth. And uh, yeah, vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. 
Next, we have Christy Green from Oklahoma. Hello, my name is Christy Greer. I'm from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Um, I've just recently celebrated three years of sobriety. Um, thank you. So I think for me, um, me moving into an Oxford house and not knowing anything about recovery or how to even to achieve it, and the ladies there guiding me through the manual and the guidelines and teaching me how to be sober was one of the most unselfish things anybody has ever done for me. Um, so Oxford House is very close to my heart and there is an amount of words that I can say up here for me to be able to express that gratitude. But um, I promise I am willing and I'm ready to be of service of any kind. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Last, we have Lynn McGee from North Carolina. This is, this is frightening. <laughs> my name is Lynn McGee. My clean date is August 4th, 1990. <laughs> Don't use no matter what. So I moved into the Oxford House in Jacksonville, North Carolina, July 19th, 2019, eight women. I've served um, as their secretary, their president. I'm the current treasurer. I've served currently as the chapter 23 secretary. Oxford House um, needs more women's houses. Oxford House really is a wonderful opportunity for us to rebuild our lives, and we need to really spread it around. There's a lot of men's houses. We need more women's houses and more children's houses. So if you elect me to the World Council, I'll work toward that. We can, we can all join a committee, though. You don't have to be elected to help. So everybody can join a committee. Um, Talk to your chapter. They're doing Zoom calls. You know, it's, it's, it's worth the commitment. It's worth helping out. So thanks for turning out today. All right, so again, this is your Selection for the resident nominees for the World Council. So please give them a round of applause. Now we're gonna move over to the alumni spot. There are three individuals here that would like to serve on this particular position. And uh, those individuals are Charlie Langley from Oregon. Joshua Huggy Huggins from Alabama. I believe the slogan is Huggy the Druggy or the ex druggy. And this particular person needs no introduction Brandy Bauer. Also, to let you all know, about 25 minutes after uh, everybody is announced, they'll go down and they'll print out the ballots. So after the general session, when you go down to the t-shirt area, uh, the ballots will be down there. You can make your selections tonight and turn them in, or you can make your selections tomorrow, but they have to be in by noon. And we will announce the new, uh, new World Council tomorrow at the second uh, the third general session, which is the uh, first one of the day, but in the afternoon. 
It's in your program. All right. For his three-minute speech is Charlie Langley from Oregon. Hey, family. How you doing? All right. So I don't really consider this convention. I consider this a family reunion. Every one of you is my family, and I love you. Okay, so long-term recovery. Uh, I haven't drank or used since January 1st, 2009. Uh, I moved into Oxford uh, two days before Christmas 2009 after I got out of treatment. Lived in my house for three and a half years. Did every position within the house. Was elected to state uh, before I moved out. Then, then I moved out and I've been an active alumni member ever since uh, till today. So, um, you know, <sighs> Ooh, I was on a roll. <laughs> oh, so many faces, so many faces. Anyway. Um, you know, I was a state officer for years after I, I became an alumni. Uh, I've been still a chapter officer for the uh, chapter I sit geographically in the middle of. I love you all. Um, you're my family, and I want to give back to you as, uh, any way I can. So here I am. Please vote for me. Charlie Langley, Oregon. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Now we're going to have Joshua Huggins from Alabama. Hey, guys. My name is Joshua Huggins, uh, also known as Huggy the ex druggy And uh, it's amazing because when I, when I fell into the only uh, men's Oxford house in Alabama in 2018, I, like, I could not imagine standing up here in front of all of y'all. I was just trying not to blow my brains out, you know. And to be up here in front of everyone, um, like Oxford House gave me so many firsts. My first time ever even wearing a suit was in Oxford House. My first world convention in 2019 was my first time flying. Um, it, it gave me a family. And I'd been in so many programs over the years that, and, and had really wanted to, I really wanted to get clean. I really wanted to. And I never could do it. I never could stay clean. And, um, and Oxford House just gave me something different that, that changed my life forever. And I mean, it's just a miracle that I'm up here. Um, I, I want everybody to have that miracle. Um, you know, Chuck C said it best. He said, there's only one reason I'm not drunk right now, only one. And that's because I've got the thing I was looking for in the bottle. I've got it. And what that is is the ability to be able to live comfortably, peacefully, and joyously with myself. And y'all gave me that. So thank y'all so much for that. Please vote for me, Josh Huggins, Huggy the ex druggy Thank you, Josh. You know, it wasn't too long ago that uh, we didn't have but two houses in Alabama. And now we have how many? 35, 31. They're doing some good work in Alabama. And last but not least, everybody knows this person, Brandy Bauer from Louisiana. Hey guys, I'm Brandy B. <laughs> Vote for me. I have a sobriety date of January 15, 2012, and for that, I'm truly grateful. I moved into my first Oxford home January 22, 2012, and for that, I'm truly grateful. While living there, I regained custody of my son, DJ. Many of you got to meet him. Creating Shreveport's first women and children's home. Um, I lived in Oxford for two and a half years. Um, still continuing to be of service in any way that I can. Um, I truly believe that I will die in debt to Oxford. I will forever want to serve Oxford in any way that I'll, I can. Um, I had the chance to be on the World Council once before, and I had to drop that responsibility. It just wasn't time for me then, but I feel like the time is now. I would love for that opportunity to serve if you would vote for me, Randy B. Um, also, since Paul isn't here, <laughs>
I'll be filling in. I love you, Paul. We miss you. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. So again, give a big round of applause to your three nominees for alumni spot on the World Council. Just to also remind you, uh, this afternoon, after this session, you'll be able to pick up your uh, voting ballots at the World Council table. You can be proactive and complete them at that time and turn them in, or you can procrastinate like we most do and turn it in tomorrow, but it has to be in by noon. Is everybody ready for some director's awards? You don't sound very excited. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Jackson and Lori, and I believe uh, is from finance. Is anyone coming as well? Yeah. Leanne. Leanne Tyler. Thank you, everybody. You want to go first? <laughs> All right. I know. <clears throat> I know this session has been really long. We're going to get through this, okay? So you can go enjoy whatever you want to enjoy this evening. Go check out DC if you just want to hang out, relax and rest up for tomorrow's full day. But we want you to uh, be able to celebrate the giving back that your houses and chapters have done. We're gonna ask you to just please hold off. I know some of you have been sitting here patiently and, and would like to maybe go have some nicotine or some caffeine. Just hold off just a little bit longer. Can we hold off just a little bit longer and not have half the room leave? Let's try to show respect for all of the states being called out that are given awards. Can we agree to do that? What we're going to do is a little bit different than what we've done in the past because we just keep growing, which is a good problem to have. We are going to call states in a little bit different order, not alphabetically. We're going to call some states that maybe have some bigger congregations and some that have some smaller ones so that we don't bottleneck the photo opportunity. When your state is called, if your state chair or one representative from your state could just come up to get the awards from your state, and then everybody from your delegation will go out these doors and out like you're going to the National Harbor breakout rooms. And Marty Walker and some other photographers are going to be in that area and are probably going to have you just gather and take a picture from the balcony looking down at you so that you all can take a quick group photo but we're gonna need to move fairly quickly and quietly when you go out, okay? So as we uh, call out your state, please just as, as quietly and as respectful as you can, start making your way out to the national ballroom for your, by the escalators. Can we, does everybody get it? Does everybody understand what we're doing? Hey, and there's a lot of beautiful spaces outside or up in the uh, atrium if you want to go take some state pictures on your own that are a little bit more formal and organized. We just want to get a group, group photo of everybody, okay? That's what we're trying to capture here. So I, before we call out some states, I want to invite the finance team up to just share a little bit about what it means to give to OHI, that we don't have any dues that are required of you, but we do ask for donations, and they're going to explain how that all works. Hey group, my name's Leanne, I'm an alcoholic and addict. I'm this CFO at Oxford House Incorporated and I just wanted to let you know that these, how much these dues help us. We have several houses that get opened that don't have any contracts with OHI and outreach workers in other states wanna open them in different states and we have no revolving loan money, such as Idaho, South Dakota. We've been able to open several houses in there with this money, <clears throat> excuse me. Stabilization houses for new houses, stabilization funds for houses that are in major trouble, specifically for in COVID times, it was really helpful. The dues helps for legal. We have a lot of legal always, always going on and it helps a lot. Um, and I just want to give a big shout out to Washington State Association. I believe that. <laughs> I've, been, I've been here for 20 years and uh, they give, I believe, 10% 
of their incoming every month. And they've done that consistently all 20 years. But you know, it helps us. All this, it goes to good things. And you know, this is the way I look at it, is that we all have an amends to make. We all have financial amends to make. And that those few little pennies that you put in a month towards your house to make these dues, um, the dues and the help with the contributions, it's kind of like an amends to the people that you can't pay back. And that's how I looked at it, you know? And um, that's all I have to say. I want to introduce Eric. And he's the one that processes it all. I just sit back and count the money. He's the one that processes it. So he's going to give you a few notes. Thanks. Good afternoon, family. My name is Eric Johnson. I'm the AP coordinator at OHI. My clean date is March 12th, 2005. I'm an alumni of two houses, Weeping Willow, uh, uh, what is it, Forrester, <laughs> and currently in a resident of North Rock Creek in DC. I want to thank you very much for your generous donations. We're trying to, excuse me, we're trying to use electronic funds method for payment. Um, checks are good, but it's easier if we do it electronic. Um, if you would like a form or have any questions, don't hesitate to email me at eric.johnson at oxfordhouse.org. I feel, um, if you feel that your house was eligible for a director's award and did not receive one, email me so that I can check into it and send it out to your house. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, in order to qual qualify for the director's award, it's $600 donation per house and 1,000 per chapter. Again, if you have any questions, concerns, or feel like your house deserved a director's award, email me at eric.johnson at oxfordhouse.org. Thank you. At the OHI table, if your house or chapter would like to sign up for EFT, if you want to take it back for the vote, get a form here, you can take it back home with you. OHI table, just around the corner, where you picked up your tote bag. Okay, we're going to go through some of these states. It's a little bit different. We've done it. A to Z, we've done it Z to A. I think we should do it by that percentage of houses that are actually given back, should be the first ones to go get their picture taken and go enjoy DC. Maybe the states that are on the lower end can raise it up a little bit and they get called a little earlier next year in Seattle. <clears throat> So first on the list, do we, do we have anybody here from New Hampshire? Did anybody attend from New Hampshire? We have one person from New Hampshire. Are they, Stacy? We have one house and they gave an award, so they have 100%. 100%. Now the, the next state, now this is impressive. They have 157 houses, or they did at the time we wrote this down. 145 are giving. 92%, the great state of Virginia. Where's the state chair? Here we go. Virginia, send up your state chair or one person to receive the awards and head out to Marty to get your photo taken. That is 92% with over 150 houses. That is very, very impressive. You will never miss Virginia at a, at a world convention. They always come with the tie-dye. How many years in a row have they come with the tie-dye? 14 years in a row, the delegates wear a tie-dye shirt. Idaho is next. Do we have anybody from Idaho? Did we get any? 
Did we get any delegates from Idaho? No delegates. So there's three houses. Two of them received the award. 67%. States, you want to come pick those up? You can help get them there. Okay. Let's give a round of applause for Idaho. Now, God, you guys are all in your t-shirts. I'm getting, getting kind of tired of the suit. I, I can dress down from time to time too, right? Now, when I'm here, when I'm here at the World Convention, I can't really represent one state because I represent too many states, but I want to represent as many people as I can. And I want to represent some of the people I love the most. I am an ally. I am an ally of the Alphabet Club, the Alphabet Gang. LGBTQIA, I'm an A. Do we got any A's in the house? All right, next. 148 houses, 94 are contributing, that's 64%. This is the great state of Louisiana. Louisiana, send up your state chair or a representative to receive the awards. In Louisiana, you can go ahead and, and head out toward, to Marty to get your photo taken. There they are, there's Louisiana. We have, we have collectively put Louisiana in our thoughts and prayers as Hurricane Ida rolled through right before everybody was about to board a plane. We were worried that a lot of people from Louisiana in that region wouldn't even be able to come. So we're so glad that you all are here. And while Louisiana is making their way out the door, I do want to give a big thanks to Lori, who's the regional manager for that area. She's, she's helping me keep all this organized. And the office keeps track of all the donations and keeps the reports going. But where's Holly Hart? Holly Hart is the, sub, uh, the chair of the subcommittee that puts all of these into the little folders and organizes them by state, spends a lot of time tedious amounts of time putting it together. Holly, are you in here? Let's give a round of applause to her for helping to organize this. We're trying to keep it as organized as we can. You all can, we can open up more than one set of doors if we want. I'm not worried about the noise anymore. The, the doors, I will say the doors are very noisy when people are going in and out and we have VIP speaker guests here. And then you have people that are hanging out outside in the hallway talking. So every time the door opens, the people that are sitting over on that side, you, you probably hear a lot of the chatter out in the hallway, right? Becomes difficult to hear what the speakers are talking about. So can we all agree, can we make a pact to work on that tomorrow to try to be just a little bit more respective to the speakers in the rooms? I know, I know some of these panels can get a little long, especially the general sessions. We have a lot of information to cover in a short amount of time, uh, but let's just please try to hold off as, as best we can from having to leave the room to stay in here just as long as you can to show respect for the speakers. That'd be great if we can do that tomorrow. The next state is Mississippi. 53% of the houses, nine of 17 houses. Where's Mississippi at? There they are. Now, interesting fact on Mississippi, they were part of a regional association that just formed their own state association. So now they have their own state association meetings. All right, the next state, 123 houses, 64 donations, 
the state that I was born and raised in, Oklahoma. And I have no idea how bad it is in the hallway there. There's probably people waiting for photos, but Oklahoma, go ahead. You're gonna be standing behind Louisiana probably for a few minutes. I, I don't know. When we were waiting for um, the, the panel to start and everybody was sitting down and we had the chants going and everybody's standing up on chairs calling. It's like, we need, you, we need everybody to sit together. We need the shirts, we need to coordinate and everybody sit together and you had this different states doing the chants. That gave me chills, that was pretty cool. To see the unity that you guys have as a state and the coordination to come up with the, the shirts. And you know what's crazy? What's crazy is we don't have that many replicated colors and we're not doing a whole lot of talking to say, hey, what color are you doing this year? Okay, we'll do a different color. You guys are just coming up with different colors. It works out pretty well. It looks like, it almost looks like from here, it looks like a quilt. It's like you can see the different colors and patterns going across the audience. But we have set a record. This is the largest world convention to date. Fifteen hundred people plus here at this world convention. It's amazing what we can do when we work together. Now, I think part of it was, part of it, and, and you, yay or nay, because we didn't have some state conventions or state retreats or some of these workshops, some of your chapters and states were sitting on a little pile of money that you could send some people to the World Convention, right? Yeah. Some of you had some money to spend, right? And got to send more than you normally would. When we anticipated how many people, as a planning committee, we try to, we try to get ahead of this the, the year of, but we're trying to sign contracts up to two years. I mean, we're looking at doing this hotel through 2029 every odd year. In fact, in 2023, we're going to be in the bigger ballroom, which is all the way down that hall, the Potomac. You, I don't, there's another group setting up in there. I think they're gonna be setting up uh, to start this weekend, but we're gonna have to take over the biggest ballroom in the biggest convention hotel in this region. That's how big we're getting. And while we, I know we have uh, probably some traffic out there. So just a couple of, of items as you, as you go out and you get your picture taken and you guys decide what you're gonna do for your evening. Um, I know money can be tight for some of you that are coming, coming here, taking off work to come here. There's the, the water taxi that can take you across. It's probably the easiest way to get across the river. Uh, Ubers can sometimes be a little pricey. You may want to get an Uber XL and have you know, people get together and do it. Um, but the D.C. area, once you get there, the metro is pretty inexpensive and it can get you around to most of the major uh, attractions that you, could, you, that you would want to see. Um, but you can do a lot just hanging out in the National Harbor area. There's uh, the little beach area. There's the Ferris wheel. I think everybody got a ticket, right, to the Ferris wheel as part of your resort, resort fee. Okay, so next... 89 houses, 46 contributions, that's 52%. We have the state of Kentucky. Where's Kentucky? <clears throat> and Kentucky has started a theme of neon shirts every year, is that correct? Every year they come with a different color, neon. Now, when we go to uh, Seattle next year, at that convention, we will receive bids from cities to host the 2024 World Convention. Uh, the last World Convention, or no, it was in Kansas City where we decided we needed to plan two years out. We've gotten too big to just come to a convention and decide where we're gonna go the next year because when we go to the hotels that have the big ballrooms like this, they're like, well, we're booked for the next five years. So I think it's best if we can all be in one hotel, that's our goal, 
is to find a hotel where we can all be in one hotel. Now, there are some cities around the country that may have convention centers that have hotels across the street, maybe a sky bridge that are connected to the convention center. There's two problems with that. One problem is because we're not in the same hotel, we lose out on a little bit of that sense of unity because we're all scrambling to go back to our rooms for different things and at the end of the night. So when we're here, there's a lot of unity that can happen when we're in one hotel. Like for instance, last night, I heard the music start at nine o'clock. Was anybody in the hotel at nine o'clock last night? They do a light show and a fountain show at nine o'clock every night with laser lights and, light and the fountains shooting off. But I saw some of the people out in the, in the atrium area. That was kind of cool to see. And you see people with the Oxford House shirts walking around the lobby in the different areas. If we do a convention center with different hotels, we'll miss out a little bit on that. And the second thing is, and this is coming from the corporate side of me, is that we end up having to sign multiple contracts. The hotel wants their piece of the pie and the convention centers want their piece of the pie too. So it will end up costing likely more money to have a convention in a smaller city that's using a convention center and that means since we're fully self-supporting, right, you can do the math, that it, it means the price of registration will go up. Now, as food prices go up, as hotel rooms go up, and we get into these bigger and nicer convention centers, just be prepared that we have to raise the registration price to equal the cost of the convention. So we try to pay for the convention through registrations. We try to, to be self-supporting. Oxford House Inc. is not interested in making a bunch of money off the convention. That's not our goal here. Our goal here is to provide an atmosphere of, of family, community, and culture and education so that you can go back to your areas and teach those that didn't get a chance to come. So I know when you look at the registration prices and you say, <clears throat> and you say, gosh, $400, it's like, what? Well, it, what, what's going on? Well, if I showed you some of the menu prices and how much we're spending on food just to eat here and how much a gallon of coffee costs, I, it's got to have gold flakes in it or something. It's ridiculous what these hotels charge, but we want to make it, we want to break even. That's the goal. So just understand as you go back home and we start planning for next year, uh, we're doing everything we can to try to maximize attendance and make it to where the most people can come. But we don't want to include corporate sponsorship because then they get to have their logos all over the place. And then they have salesmen running around trying to get you to do buy their product or sign up with their services or whatever they're doing. And we just want to talk about recovery in Oxford House. That's all we're interested in. The only, <clears throat> the only vendors we really want to see is just the different states selling all the cool t-shirts and swag. That's what we want to see. All right, the next state with 145 houses, 70 contributed. That's 48%, just under half. The state of New Jersey, where's New Jersey at? Let's give a round of applause to New Jersey. Hey, hey Dan Hahn, Jonathan Gildart, how are we looking out there? They can't hear me. Is it, I just wonder how bottleneck is it out there? Who's coming up from New Jersey, coming up to get the awards? So when we go to Seattle next year, it's not gonna be Labor Day weekend. We were supposed to be in Seattle in 2020 and we just, we couldn't do it. You know, it was not gonna be safe for anybody for us to go to Seattle. So we, we held off and, and we negotiated with the hotel to push it back to 2022. and. They were a little reluctant at first, but we eventually got them to agree, but we moved it to the, the week of the 18th. So that I think it's gonna be the 22nd through the 26th. I don't have a calendar in front of me. It's that, it, it's near the end of September. But I, I hear that Seattle is, the weather there is great, right? <laughs> Can you promise that the sun will shine every day when we're there? No. At least they're honest, a program of honesty. <clears throat> well, I know all of us are excited to visit Seattle. 
the state that has held the most Oxford houses for, I don't know, a couple decades. <laughs> Did you guys hit 350? Three, well, how many? 360? I'm hearing all kinds of numbers, y'all. Y'all don't even know, one part of the state don't even know what house is open in the other part of the state. You got so much activity going on. All right, well, the numbers that I have here from a little bit ago, but at the time, 349 houses and 149 were contributing. That's 43%. Washington State. <laughs> Send your chair up or a representative to receive the awards and make your way out to Marty Walker. <laughs> it's gonna take them a minute to get a picture. There's a lot of people in that group. being told that we are very efficient in getting our photos taken. So I'm going to keep it moving. All right. I want to show a hands. And this, in, this includes the people that are leaving the room. How many, this is your first world convention ever. Wow. Wow. How many of you have less than six months in recovery? A lot of newcomers. There we go. You know, when I, when I try to explain to people what the World Convention is and the feeling that you get from it, it's just you can't put words on it. It's just the energy. There's this excitement that you can't explain to somebody. I just tell people, I'm like, I, I, I could try to tell you, but I'd be doing it a disservice. You just have to come experience it. Yeah. Am I right? You, you have to come experience this. So I'm hoping that those of you that were, you know, a little excited, maybe a little nervous about traveling across the country and coming and sitting in a big room with a bunch of people. I hope that we are meeting your expectations and giving you the education and the entertainment that we come to love with Oxford House. Are you guys having a good time? All right, Washington is still making their way out of the room. But we're gonna go ahead and keep it moving. The next state is another large state, 295 houses, 125 contributed, that's 42%. North Carolina. Where are you at, North Carolina? Now, here's the big question, North Carolina, is that North Carolina blue or Duke blue? It's almost, it's almost a mix of the two, isn't it? It's a blended. Did you guys hit 250 houses? Three hundred, did you hit 300 houses? We hit it, 300. Let's give a round of applause for the second state to hit 300 houses. That's not easy to do. We may have some states here near the bottom that don't have any awards, but we will call you out so you can go get a photo still, okay? Uh, North Carolina, you forgot to send somebody to get your awards. Don't you want the awards? Here comes somebody. <clears throat> I 
Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna mix up I'm gonna mix it up just a little bit because I I have a plan. Okay, so just just roll with me here. Y'all trust me? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna call the state here. Oh, they're excited out there. This state has 46 houses, 16 are contributing, that's 35%. And they were the last non-DC area state to host the World Convention, the great state of Missouri. <clears throat> and I know what color that is. <clears throat> that's Kansas City Chiefs red, isn't it? <clears throat> Missouri just uh, reestablished their state association and they're now working across the state, hand in hand. The Show Me State. All right, it, they're gonna make their way out. And the reason that I call them is because I wanna say something about the next two states because they're, they're almost sister states. And the reason that they're sister states is that we didn't have any houses in these states for a long time. And then we got some funding uh, near about the same time and they have established some houses and chapters and state association and, and risen up and grown at about the same rate. And it's been amazing to watch the quality of homes that are opened in these two states and the quality of members that come through those states, the quality of outreach to get hired to to work within these states. And I'm a, I'm a little partial to one of them because I'm actually the regional manager for that state. And Lori's a little partial to the other one because she's the regional manager for that state. So I'm gonna say AZ. AZ. With 59 houses, 21 of them are already giving, 36%. We had zero houses when we were in Kansas City. Zero. Now we're up over 50. Florida, 73 houses. 73 houses in just over two years, and 23 are contributing, that's 32%. So Arizona, Florida, come on. And I will say that as a regional manager for Arizona, we are encouraging every house that opens that as soon as the checkbook shows up at the house, they vote to start contributing. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Is that how you guys are doing it in your states? When the house is open, we, we get them on track with contributing. All right, so they're making their way out. Let's call out some of these smaller states that don't have any contributing. Do we have anybody here from Wyoming? I don't think so. Montana? Is anybody here from Montana? Michigan? Do we have any delegates from Michigan? These are, ha these are states that just have a couple of houses. I just I want to call them out because you never know. We may have somebody that showed up. Minnesota, we have one house in Minnesota. Do we have anybody here from there? Georgia, we have one house. Anybody from Georgia? Do we have anybody from Connecticut? Any delegates from the houses in Connecticut? Alaska. Did anybody make it from Alaska this year? Jason, Bliss, anybody come from Alaska? Okay. 
Okay. The next state, 102 houses, 29 are contributing. That's 28%, just under a third. The great state of Colorado. Where's Colorado? <clears throat> well, you can't miss them in a lit up room. <coughs> Who's gonna come get the award? Raise your hand, okay. Colorado. Now I heard a rumor. Is Colorado putting in a bid? Denver, Colorado putting in a bid next year? I think it's being discussed that Denver's interested in hosting the 2024 World Convention. I also think that Orlando, Florida is interested in hosting the 2024 World Convention. Are there any other states considering it? All right, the next state is the state of Delaware. Where's Delaware at? There we go. There's some excitement. Delaware, 73 houses, 19 contributing, 26%. Delaware. Now that's a lot of houses for a very, very small state. I think Delaware still has the highest number of houses per capita. And I don't think, I don't think any of these bigger states are even going to come close to the percentage of Oxford House beds to population in the state. All right, this next state is a, a new up and coming state. They have 32 houses and eight of them are contributing. That's 25%. Alabama. Alabama, roll tide. Is everybody an Alabama fan? No, not everybody, not everybody. But there is a rivalry. And they take it serious too, like they, they kill trees and stuff. I heard about that. <coughs> They have like 100-year-old trees that said, hey, no, we don't like your team, so we're going to kill your tree. Vicious. Okay, I'm, I'm being told not to worry about the line outside, so I'm going to keep this going so that you all can get out there and enjoy D.C. The next state happens to have the most delegates here at this world convention. 283 houses. It's the state I call home, 64 contributing, 23%. Tejas, where are you at, Tejas? <laughs> Deep in the heart of where? We could... I really believe that the first three or four world conventions had less people than Texas brought to this world convention. That's how big their delegation is. I mean, when you have almost 40 chapters, it can do a little fundraising. Did they come up to get the awards, Texas? Okay. Now here's the real trick. You got enough people, Texas, that when Marty looks down to take the picture, you guys should form the state of Texas. Wouldn't that be cool? You can just form the state of Texas with your delegates. When I moved to Texas and I started doing outreach in Texas, I found an interesting fact when I went to El Paso for the first time. El Paso is closer to Southern California than it is to Houston in its own state. That's how big Texas is. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I put 200,000 miles on a car in five years working in Texas. 
All right, the next state, 125 houses, 28 contributing, that's 22%. Tennessee. <laughs> Who's gonna take the awards? And Tennessee did something I've never seen before with delegate shirts. They all have their unique area on their shirt. That is really, really cool. So that the area that they come from is on their delegate shirt. Now, here you are, Tennessee. We are Tennessee. The volunteer state. Am I right? I mean, that's what it's about in Oxford House. All right, the next state on the list with 20% of the number of houses contributing, 64 houses, 13 contributed, Indiana. And I do want to appreciate everybody's patience that are still in here. Thank you all so much for being responsive and patient with me as we get through this. We, th we feel that it is very important, even as big as we get, that we try to get that group photo for everybody. We want everybody to have a chance to get that group photo before we split up and go do our own thing in the evening, especially in the, in the same shirts. The next state, 30 houses, six contributing, that's 20%. That's the great state of Hawaii. Do we have any delegates from Hawaii? I know we have staff. Do we have any delegates from Hawaii? Where's Joe? We have one? It's an expensive trip to come to DC from Hawaii. So we'll get the awards. It feels like it's six in the morning, doesn't it? on Hawaii time. <laughs> the next state with 31 houses and five contributing, that is a percentage of 16, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, where are you at? How many delegates do we have from Pennsylvania? We have an outreach that's gonna come pick those up. All right, the next state I love this state. My wife is from this state. 221 houses, 32 contributing. That's 14% Oregon. How many of you were around for the Portland convention? Man, that was a great convention. Wonderful convention. It never rains there either, does it? You know what I heard? Here's an interesting fact. When I visited Portland for the first time, they said they sell more sunglasses in the Portland, Seattle region than anywhere in the country. And I said, well, why? how is that? It rains there more than anywhere. They said that's because it goes so many days between sunlight that you lose your glasses. So you have to buy another pair when the sun comes out again. That's interesting. I should start a sunglass hut in Oregon. The next state is the state of Arkansas. Seven houses, one contributing. It's 14%. Uh, we did have one delegate that was going to come and, and was unable to make it. Maine is next on the list. Eight houses, one contributing, 13%. Do we have anybody from Maine? Is that M-E? -E? I, yeah, I hope so. I hope I'm reading these off right. Next is Nebraska. 56 houses, seven contributing, 13%. Send your state chair up to get the award. We'll have to figure that out. 
The next state with 22 houses and two contributing is New Mexico. Where's my New Mexico family? There they are. I work closely with New Mexico, have a lot of love for the hats, chili capital of the world. How many for Nebraska? New Mexico should have two. Okay. Next, with 100 houses even at the time, nine contributing, South Carolina. Come on down, South Carolina. Send somebody. South Carolina. Now they have a quote. Is it Latin? What's the quote? There we go. With the palm tree and the, uh, and the crescent moon. When is Myrtle Beach gonna host a world convention? Do we have any big enough hotels at, on the beach? No? The next state with 59 houses and four contributing at 7% is the state of Maryland, our host state this year. Maryland, where are you at? DC, 37 houses, one contributing, 3%. DC is going to join Maryland, their regional association. Go get your group photo. All right, the next state, 38 houses, two contributing, 5%. That's West Virginia. All right, all right. We're excited about West Virginia. Are you from West Virginia? Okay, I know you guys have been waiting. Here it go. Here we go. Are you guys ready? Let's wait a couple minutes longer. Let's wait just a couple minutes. Well, let's wait. Let's wait till the door. Hey, have a seat. Have a seat. Hold on. Hold on. No, I'm just kidding. Come on. You guys go ahead. Kansas, 134. 134 houses, six contributing, 4%. Now you guys are gonna make a little commitment, right? To raise that up a little bit, a little bit. Come on. I believe in you, Kansas. Help from us? You have all sorts of help. You guys are the most self-supporting state in the country. Next on the list, I know they are every year. Next on the list, Wisconsin, 37 houses, one contributing, 3%. Wisconsin. What say we got? What states left? I don't, is everybody gone? No, you guys come up here. You guys come up here, I wanna to talk to y'all. Let, let Kansas get through there. I wanna, I wanna tell you guys a few things. Illinois has had houses for a long time in that state. Is, is Kalimba in the house? If they're up, if Kalimba's here, let's get them up here too. What do we got? What state is over here? Ohio. Ohio. Come over here too. Come over here. Let's have a let's have a powwow because this Midwest part of the country, as it relates to Oxford House Inc. involvement, 
is just now is just now getting started. And there's a lot of states that doesn't have OHI direct involvement. But we're just getting started in Illinois. We're just getting started in Ohio. And you all are the foundation of that. You get to create something brand new that they haven't seen before from the OHI's perspective, a different perspective than what they've seen before. So don't be discouraged that you are sitting here last. Don't be discouraged that all these big states, they've been doing it for years and for decades. It took them a long time of blood, sweat, and tears. And guess what? They've gone down all the bumpy roads so that you don't have to. We have a lot of people here that will show you the best way to go about it moving forward to grow. So do everything you can to bend the ear of those bigger states that one day, not only will you have more people in more of those chairs, but you'll be hosting conventions. So I just wanted to encourage you guys that you guys are just at the beginning of an amazing journey and just stay the path, stay the path, stay positive. Can we do that? Thank you guys. Go get your group photo.